Not even two years old, little Annabelle is lying lifeless at the bottom of the stairs. Not for that one, which emergency. My stepdaughter fell down the stairs. Her father's fiance, Emily DeFries, claims she discovered Anna after the toddler accidentally took a terrible tumble. But cops claim this was no accident. They're about to charge Emily DeFries with murder. The medical examiner lost count of how many bruises Anna had on her back. She had a skull fracture over four inches long that came to a T. She had hemorrhaging in her eyes. She had bruising in her stomach from being pushed down. She had bruises around her neck. She went through hell. Yeah. Emily DeFries was the only adult home when Anna was killed, but claims she didn't see anything. I didn't see those injuries occur. I don't know what happened. But cops think they do. Emily just became engaged to Anna's father the night before. She wanted to focus on wedding plans, but Anna wouldn't take her nap. And prosecutors say the punishment went too far claiming Emily shook Anna and smashed her head against the floor or wall, then placed her at the bottom of the stairs to stage a cover-up. Do you understand the back of her head is smashed in? Yes. And they confronted me very aggressively that day and told me that I was a murderer, that I had done this, that they knew I had done this. There was no other explanation. Anna did not walk to the top of the stairs, and Anna did not fall. You placed her at the bottom of those stairs. No, I did not. Yes, she did. No, I did not. Yes, she did. They didn't want to hear anything other than that. I wasn't able to really explain anything or tell them that that wasn't true. I loved my life. It was amazing I'm, having full success. Yeah, and you know what? As a mother myself that has little ones at home, it can get overwhelming. Emily, come on now. It is time for the lives to stop. There's nothing that I'm like. Oh, that medical examiner. Even under the hot glare of police interrogation, Emily sticks to her story. Were you offered a plea at any point? Yes. Why did you take the plea? I'm not going to plead guilty to something I did not do. But Emily's grilling doesn't end with the police. In her trial for second-degree murder, the prosecution hammers at Emily's statements and testimony. Anna's mom says Emily's story seemed to change every time she told it. I mean, come on now. First, she fell down the stairs. Oh, autopsy results came back. Now I have that piece of information. Let me change my story because I need to get out of jail. Emily's defense attorney, James Broccoletti, says the case is purely circumstantial. They didn't know when. They didn't know how, they didn't know where, and we thought that was very suggestive of the fact that they didn't know who. But they did know how appalling the killing was. Medical experts testified that baby Anna was, quote, struck repeatedly. Blood infused her brain from shaking and slamming. Her little arm dislocated from a pulling or twisting force, and the killing blow, a smashed skull from blunt force trauma against a hard object. The brutality shocks even the prosecution's medical expert who testified, quote, you need a lot of force to break a kid's skull, a lot. I don't know exactly. I hope nobody knows exactly how much. For the record, did you kill Anna? No. I've never reacted with violence to anything in my entire life. I didn't start that day. But Emily was the only one home with the strength to commit the crime. Or was she? I know that there is someone in that house other than myself who is capable of causing each and every one of those injuries. There's only two people that are in the house that are physically capable of that, Emily and the eight-year-old. So obviously, by process of elimination, uh, if it's not Emily, then it has to be the eight-year-old. That eight-year-old is Anna's older sister. And so the kids are outside, Anna's upstairs sleeping, and what you're saying is, is at some point prior to you going in and finding Anna, there's a 30-minute window, is that accurate? Yes. Where her eight-year-old sister was inside the house. Yes. It's a bombshell theory. Not everybody's buying it. I was like, oh, here comes another lie. Let's just keep coming up with more. I mean. 
straight nonsense to me. And it begs the question, why would this eight-year-old murder her baby sister? The answer, the defense argues, comes from the testimony of the girl's father, Brandon. His eight-year-old, he knows, has some issues, so he was a very credible witness. He had also talked about violent episodes and violent outbursts that the eight-year-old had engaged in, and outbursts directed at the 20-month-old. And something else. Of all the numerous bruises across Anna's little body, the defense says there's one bruise that may hold a key clue. Is it the evidence that can save Emily DeFreeze? Coming up, an eight-year-old girl takes the stand, and her answers raise the question, does Emily DeFreeze belong behind bars? At the end of the day, do you believe that Emily is a killer? 